and uh, yeah we are live so hello everybody who will be watching this podcast uh, anytime in the future because we are making it live so if you will uh, connect to us live you will be able to give us the questions and that's the main reason of doing live to give real-time questions but the conversation is is going to be definitely very valid itself so you could see it anytime in the future just without such a great opportunity to ask live questions so that you can do it being on the live conversations and uh, today i'm very honored and i'm very happy actually to have this person in my podcast uh, my friend, uh, I met Martin like uh, we were counting the years now, but I, I don't know then. It was like seven years ago, I guess, 2014, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it was uh, May, May 2014, yeah. Something like that, yeah. So it was like six years ago and Martin is from Slovakia, I'm from Lithuania. Uh, we met in Cuba, and now we are having this life. I'm being in Miami, and Martin being in Sydney. So <laughs> it's very international <laughs> things going on here. <laughs> and I'm really honored to, to have you, Martin, on this conversation because you know, I, I we are friends on Facebook. So I time to time I see your posts and uh, what's happening in your life. Uh, I be honest, I won't. I wasn't following you so much. You know, like I wasn't stalk, stalking on you like. <laughs> every time but every time i see something you know it's great things happening in your life and uh, you. honestly you are one of the most inspiring bartenders for me and uh, i'm really happy to know you and i'm really happy to have this conversation with you today because uh, just we will know everything in this conversation but just uh, a short uh, teaser uh, Martin uh, was selected as an international bartender of the year 2019. He, he is a world champion of good spirits and coffee in 2017. And he is one of the most influential people in the industry selected by Forbes 30 and 30. And it's a great uh, honor <laughs> to be that in that list, um, as I know. So when I saw that, I thought, wow, that's great. And uh, many more things, you know, but that we will talk on this conversation. So uh, it's actually will be you talking more. It's just <laughs> me in the beginning, you know, talking all these uh, teasers and everything. And uh, today, Martin is uh, working with Mr. Black. Uh, I'm not sure. We will know if you are one of the owners. Yes, isn't that is that true or no? I'm I'm a global brand ambassador, so I'm the face of the brand. Okay, global brand brand <laughs> global brand ambassador. So it's very great. So we will know that because it's the recent thing now. But I want to go all the way through the history of your life. And okay. the idea of my podcast is what I want to do in the post podcast that I do uh, every Wednesday now, who is watching or will be watching. So just keep in mind, I'll try to keep having a podcast with inspiring people from the industry every Wednesday. So uh, I want to inspire new people uh, to be admired by bartending profession and also for people who are working as a bartender, just to have a wider view, because there are different bartenders, you know, in different parts of the world, or bartending as an occupation, as a profession, is valued differently. And sometimes people think that, you know, uh, okay, I'll be a bartender and uh, then I get a real job, you know. So that's what they <laughs> want to know that you can have a real job being a bartender and the bartender is wide. You can be like a global brand of ambassador and uh, like there's a lot of opportunities in this industry. So that's what I want to start uh, from the beginning. Uh, so how did you start thing bartending? Uh, how old was you? What was the circumstances? Why did you start it? And uh, how did you grow? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's always nice to share my story with people out there. You know, some of you might find it inspirational, some of you might not. Maybe some of you find it as similar as your story, you know, because uh, it's nothing special. It's a very simple story. Uh, I used to study culinary school when I was younger, back home in Slovakia, where I'm from. And just so you know, in the perspective of Slovakia or Czechoslovakia back in time, as most American people still remember, it, it's it's a it's a country or it's a, in the location in Europe where the culinary, where the food 
is a more dominant industry than drink, right? So if you look in at Czech a, beer is quite uh, popular as well, actually. Yes, yes, like Czech beer, Pilsner, that's still like there, Budweiser and stuff like that. But if you're talking like cocktails or coffee, nothing oh, like that exists. It's really like no. outdated and old fashioned, you know, it's, a, it's really like this back kind of uh, style of the drinking. And we weren't on the map for many years in terms of that. So when I started school, which was like 15 years ago, you know, like there were some opportunities to do some classic bartender course or barista course with IBA, so official international bartender association. I did those things, you know, because I was curious. I wanted to, you know, kind of a step out of the classic studying and reading books about, you know, about the cooking and reading books about, yeah. you know, hospitality. So I did those courses and then I realized like it's pretty much fun. I really want to carry on with that. And I did a couple of those junior level competitions where, you, you know, you have to hold the jigger like this and white okay. napkins and, and gloves and put the garnish with the tongs and don't touch the straw and stuff like that. Like very old fashioned style of the competitions. And I all oh, did that. And then I had this kind of idea, like, I want to be cool bartender. I saw those movies you know, we're back to the throwing bottles and fire oh. show. And I was like, okay. I want to be that. I want to be flare bartender, you know? So I did a little bit of flare from beginning, but the main reason why I did that was just basically uh, <laughs> to bring more attention to myself from, uh, from a uh, female part of the audience. Oh, okay. You know, I just, I just tried <laughs> to co connect uh, at this young age, you know, with, uh, with, with some potential girlfriends or, you know, yeah. just have fun. Uh, but as soon as I step out of the school and I start working in a local coffee shop called Dublin Cafe in my hometown, and that was more than 10 years ago, I realized that every how, day uh, competition... Martin, uh, I will interrupt you a bit. Just want to know how old was you? I was you? 18. I was 18. 18 at that time. Yeah. Okay. 18, 19. So I started working in this local cafe. And, you know, like you are naive, you know, you think it's like competition and it's all fun and people are going to love you. But in reality, I went there. And uh, the real competition was every day, you know, the judges were your guests. And I was suddenly challenged by everyday problems. And I realized that the operation of coffee shop, because it was a simple coffee shop with some drink, but I realized that operation of all of that is so different than at school. And I really sober up quickly and I realized, oh my God, like, this is it. Like, this is it to be like a bartender or barista. Like, you cannot even be bartender in my hometown because no one knows cocktails. Like, people were know what is mojito. <laughs> 10 years ago, they know what it's maybe French martini or, you know, like pina colada <laughs> 10 years ago. But I was like working this little coffee shop and I was really, really focusing on the coffee from the beginning because it was my pure passion. The coffee is still widely drank back in Europe, in Central Europe, in Slovakia, more than cocktails. So I was like, sure, I want to do coffee. I want to be barista, but I was still kind of trying to find a way how to do cocktails. And only one way how to do it is basically to start travel, do as many competitions as possible, read the books which weren't available in Slovakia and go a little bit outside of comfort zone. And uh, I think that was the time when I realized that I really need to invest time and money into myself if I want to be the best in my country. Uh, and uh, that was the time where I started competing, you know. And uh, one of those competitions where uh, this competition with Havana around, we did together and that yeah. allows me to travel to Cuba in 2014, you know, and like I did many of those competitions, you know, I went uh, across almost, you know, the world and Europe with those competitions and kind of, I loved it, you know, but not because, you know, I wanted to be like the best and I want to win, but I started realizing I love it because this is like a free opportunity for you to see the world, see, yeah, exactly. what, other pe see what other people do, you know, see other nationalities and their techniques and styles. And, uh, and, and, what was the most important to see myself how good or bad I am right and in all those competitions I failed you know and that makes me realize I have to work harder and one of the most significant competitions which became kind of my a daily routine and kind of my life was coffee in good spirit as you mentioned coffee cocktail competition which is held every year in different country and you need to first of all win the national round to be the best in your country so then you is can... it a, is it in all the world because i never heard it in lithuania i think we don't have might not have it or it's yeah it's know, like it's like it's it's like olympic games you know you have a different uh, okay. different different styles you know and you have to pick what you want to compete in and then you can go to the world finals but you have to have enough competitors in the different style to be able to create a national round 
Okay, it's interesting. So, <laughs> so maybe in Lithuania, you know, you have a competition which is like latte art, making pictures in a cappuccino. You oh, know, okay. maybe you have you have, you have barista competition, maybe you have brewers cup, so making filter coffee. But there weren't enough people like me, coffee cocktail people, who would be oh, interested okay. to to go this competition. So I started competing in 2010, you know, in this competition, and it took me seven oh. years to com to compete. And I was three Ooh. times this. I was three times. No, I was two times disqualified in national round. Why disqualified? <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, I, I, no, no, no. It's very simple. Uh, I thought at that time I'm the best bartender in the in Slovakia. I went to this coffee competition. You know, I had this dry ice, and I had this kind of half of the forest serve. You know, like world class style. And I focus on the music and my beard and my jacket and all this bullshit, which didn't matter. And yeah. I went there and I was and I was five minutes over time. So because oh, okay. I was over time, I was disqualified. So I realized, oh. okay, okay, I better be faster. So 2011, year after I went there, I was faster. I was on the time, but I didn't read the rules because I'm bartender. So who the fuck reading rules? I was like, I don't care. And one I know, of the I rules, know that. <laughs> one of the rules says, like, when you make coffee as a coffee, you cannot put it on top of the coffee machine because that's like bridging the law. Like, what the oh, fuck? Okay. And, I, and I did that and they disqualified me for that reason. I was like, what? Oh, okay. So 2012, I went for the third time. I read the rules. I was on the time. I did amazing coffee cocktail and I became second in my country, which was amazing because it was oh, just three of us. It was three of us competing. Oh, so, it's always <laughs> it's amazing. Anyways, so so, it, <laughs> so I was almost there, and in 2013 I finally won Slovakian finals. Went to the world finals in France in Nice, in a French Riviera, and I became sixth in the world in a coffee cocktails. And you know there are like 40 different countries. It's massive competition. I would compare it to the world class. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, cool. You have like different rounds, and you know you have to do different things, and I became six in the world. I got this little trophy, and on the way back home, I was like cuddling the trophy, and it was like, ah, oh, so cool. And how many, how many participants were there then? <laughs> I, I mean, like, I mean, like forty. Oh, like that. it was great! It's, it's, it's yeah, fantastic. Uh, it's so I like... made it. Yeah, it's 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 good. You know, like you know, you're getting there. You're almost closer to become world champion. So, so your ego growing. You know, you're confident. So this was before uh, Havana Club, yes. 2013. This, this 2013, but 2014, when Havana happened in the May, June, the same month I went to Melbourne, to Australia for the first time in my life because I won for the second time Slovakian finals. I went for the second time to the world finals, which this year happened in Australia, not in Europe. Okay, so it was 2014, the same month as the Havana Club. Well, yeah, so okay. so within the month, within the month, I had a world coffee final and world bartenders final okay. on the opposite That's... side of the world. <laughs> the, amazing <laughs> that's amazing really <laughs> so I, I, I went to melbourne yeah and um you know it's uh, australia was considered as a coffee country and there are many great baristas in coffee shops the coffee culture is here you know and it was my there. first time <laughs> well one day brother oh yeah, oh, it, yeah. Was, it was it was my first time and i was really surprised by the level of quality and service and hospitality and I compete, yeah, for the second time in the world finals. And believe it or not, I became second in the world. I became uh, the 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 runner up. And I was like, wow, okay. I was six last year. I'm a second uh, now. So it's amazing. Like, I'm, it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, you know, I'm getting there. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah. That same year when we met in Cuba, I think in Cuba, I won this speed round challenge where we had to do like five drinks on as fast as possible and i did five ram collins in 52 seconds and, and I think uh, I won the... martin so in i don't remember in havana club you you you, you got to the second day to that top 15. yes no? yes yeah. I, got, I, I got I to the, yeah i got to top 15 from 50 competitors yeah. and then in those in those top 15 i won the speed round and over the years, I really didn't know like my final ranking because they said number one but somehow daniel nevsky from yeah. cocktails for you yeah. he told me he told me last year or a couple of years ago it was like man like you were number three or number two or something like that i was like what <laughs> i didn't know that <laughs> how could i know that but anyway like all those competitions That's in 2014 like everything opened the doors to me and uh, i came up to realization that maybe slovakia is a bit small for me you know it's easy to be like one of the best in my country when it's 10 of us you know as a bartender back in time 
And how how many really, people live in Slovakia? Like, we I have like, I, we have like six million people, right? Six. Also, it's even bigger than Lithuania. We have like three million, the most. <laughs> if everybody oh, really? come back, come back from from England, then three million. <laughs> 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 so it's pretty okay, but uh, uh, you know, <laughs> as I said, like. In terms of like cocktails and bartenders, there were many of us, you know, you're like 10 of us maybe at that time. So it's like, it's easy, you know, and I won like, I won like, uh, I was nominated for bartender year and all this stuff, which I start taking for granted because I said like, it's so easy to be the best in such a small country, right? So I wanted more. I wanted to challenge myself, you know? That's true. That's true. You want to grow. That's uh, understandable. So I came to realization after five years in a little, co- little coffee shop in my hometown that if I want to see how good I am, you know, I have to leave my country and uh, move to the Mecca of cocktails, move to the country where the cocktails are the best, where the, the history London. was written. And that's the <laughs> London. And that's the London. And that's the chapter where... Actually, the history was written in America, but then London took the, the, the ball. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, European European cocktail history, yeah, European school of bartending. So I took this opportunity and I uh, moved to London. And as you know, the rest is history. I got this white jacket, work at the oldest American bar in the in the Europe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's amazing. That's how uh, how how did you get into that bar? Okay, I know <laughs> that the, the general manager is also from Slovakia, Eric. Yeah, so it's maybe a little bit easier, but you know, still. You have to be very good. They don't take you just because you are from the same country. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. No, there are many speculations and debates because the team is very small. It's four senior bartenders and one head bartender, which is Eric. And he so was five. 11. So five bartenders in total, right? In total, Only. five. Oh, yeah. And it works every day. So you and all the day. So like double yeah. shift. And then yeah, you, 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 you work. Yeah, you work five days a week on different shifts. But what I want to say is it's very small team. To get okay. a job behind to get a job behind the bar, it's very hard and very unique and rare. You know, if you think of historically, you know, Savoy opened in 1889, and since that, in 130 years of history, there were only 11 head bartenders. You know, from okay. Ada Coleman, Harry Craddock, till Eric Lawrence. You know, so, so it's like his, historically, it's very like place which keeping the people you know and it's hard to infiltrate in you know yeah definitely sounds like that so how did you get the job uh, tell us a <laughs> secret you know maybe some other guy you know bartender wants to get in some you know <laughs> other good bar in his country or uh, anyway you know <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah since i got job there there's so many people were texting me from all around they were like oh man i want to get job too how you did it how you managed because I was kind of inspiration from little small hometown, you know, in Slovakia. Out yeah, of definitely. nowhere. That's what you know, I'm my... saying. You're one of the most inspirational bartenders I know. <laughs> but, you know, like out of nowhere, you know, you, you, you put this white jacket on you. And I'll be honest with you. I, I believe that success, if you want to be successful, it's all about being prepared no matter what. Always be prepared. You never know when opportunities will come. And what happened basically uh, in 2014 after summer, I start sending like little messages to Slovakian Czech bartenders in London. You know, I text mm-hmm. to Alex Kratena. Alex Kratena was at Artisan at the time. I text Marian mm-hmm. Becke. He was at Nijar. I mm. text to Rusty Servan. He was at uh, Connaught and so on, so on. I text to many people I knew. And one of them was Eric Lawrence at the Savoy at the time. Yeah. I, met, I met Eric before twice in my life. First in 2011 when he gave me award in Slovakian Bar Awards as a new talent of the year or discoverer of the year. Oh, and we, the, now we know one more uh, of your uh, <laughs> winning. <Yeah. laughs> and 2013, uh, I met him in Prague in Czech Republic. He did seminar with Peter Dorelli uh, about Savoy and classic drinks, white lady and corpse survivor. And I remember oh. I, I came to him like, oh, Mr. Lawrence, you know, like very humble and shy. Can I ask you to make a picture with me and Peter Dorelli? So I made the picture with Eric and Peter Dorelli. And Peter Dorelli was ex-head bartender. Yeah. So I made the I made the comment <laughs> under this picture in 2000. 14, 13, I made this comment that past, present, and then future, future. Like, 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 like me. Yeah? So, so, we still have time, yeah? We still have time, bro. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, basically, I just sent a message to Eric. I was like, hey, I'm looking for something, if you have something. And I was expecting, like, yeah, like a bar bag or, you know, some job in cantina in a kitchen or next door somewhere. 
And he was mm-hmm. like, yeah, actually, we're looking for a replacement. We have uh, this legend leaving, Tom Walker. And I was like, who the fuck is Tom Walker? Google it. And he's a Bacardi Legacy winner who now moved, who now moved to Florida or Miami. He's somewhere there. And he was like, really? incredibly, okay. he was, he's incredibly like well-known, you know, global champion. And I was like, so what do you mean he's leaving? Like, he was like, I'm looking for a replacement. I need senior bartender. I was like, me. No way. <laughs> so he said, he said, I'll put your application in. I'll put your name in. So I, I recommend you. I'm going to recommend you. But just so you know, there are like more than 100 people waiting for this job, right? So oh, it's all yeah. up to you. All up to you. So on Sunday, I did this online test, uh, which was scheduled by American kind of psychological company. 60 different questions. And you have to answer the question within a minute, different options. And it's more kind of like psychological character personality test who okay, you are. So it's, it's nothing about the profession no it was like oh, right. you, you you walk to the room and there is a paper on the floor what you're gonna do pick it up ignore it put it in the bin etc and then question 50 later on gonna be is it true that your house it's tidy it's messy you know they just want to find out what kind of person you are yeah and exactly. eric and eric eric told me be careful because there are so many good bartenders who apply for this job already and they didn't pass the psychological personality test. Oh, yeah, I was like, great. I was like, I was like, holy crap. So it was Sunday. Uh, Tuesday, Eric uh, called me and he was like, hey, the results came. You passed the uh, personality test. Uh, that's amazing. That's the first step. Would you like to come for personal interview uh, to London, to the Savoy? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, when you can come? And I was like, tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. So on, okay. <laughs> on, on Wednesday, on Wednesday day after, I took my flight to London. And just so you know, I never been in London before. I never been really? in the Savoy. <laughs> I never saw the Savoy. I never saw London. You know, I just dreamed about it. So I took the flight to London day after. I went to the Savoy. Oh, oh of course, I was late because I got lost. I didn't know how to get from the airport. So <laughs> yeah, I took... it's a, bit, a bit complicated to know to fly from another country where I've never been to London. Crazy. Man, it's crazy. <laughs> But I got there and Eric just introduced me to the bar manager and GM, and beverage director and human resources. And I got like three hours of interviews and it was very, very difficult. The questions like very hard questions, basically. So I spent the like whole day of interviewing without Eric. So he wasn't involved in that. And it was all in my hands. And I remember manager asking me at that time, like, if you can choose, what would you choose more, coffee or cocktails? I was like, both. <laughs> I, I'm on 50-50. You know, I'm barista as well. I'm not just bartender. Well, mm-hmm. what happened, what happened day after on Thursday, I flew in back home to Slovakia and I had last phone call with the GM of the hotel, but he was in the US on the work trips just over the phone. And it was like the last thing to do, hold this long week interview. And I remember it was a Friday, 11th of November, 2014, 11.35 in the morning. I was in the car on the way to Prague for a coffee festival or something. And I got a message from Eric. Congratulations. Welcome in the best bar team in the world. I cried like a little boy. I was like, oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and uh, m- month after, month after, 10th of December 2014, on Wednesday, 4.30, I stepped for the first time uh, behind the American bar as a senior bartender with a white jacket, carrying 130 years of history and legacy on my shoulders, representing the most classiest hotel bar in the world. No, yeah, that's amazing. I've I never been there. Never been there. It's it's a lifetime experience. It's the history is captured there. All the you think about like you know people, you know like Marilyn Monroe, you know you, you Winston Churchill, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, you know like Greta Garbo. Everyone, everyone stayed yeah. there. It's still like it's like that till nowadays. And you know like those four years I've been there, almost four years. They just went so fast, so so fast. So you spent the four years in in, in the bar. In the yeah, summer. pretty much, pretty much almost four years. Yeah. All right, that's great. It's 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 a great place to grow. I believe that in those four years, you just grow like uh, usually uh, in Slovakia. Probably you would never grow nowhere like that, or maybe in in a lifetime. That's sure. crazy. It's wow, wow, wow. That's amazing. You know, I remember I seeing your pictures on Facebook. You know, with this uh, white uh, jacket, uh, this white suit. You know, and I was like thinking, wow, that's great because I. I was I heard those rumors about Savoy and you know about his legacy and everything. 
Uh, actually, I've been to London once uh, in 2014 or 13 because I win Monin uh, competition okay. in Lithuania, and they took um, they took me to London to the best bars, and we went to Artesian, there to Niger, to Dirty Martini, to somewhere, and I don't know why we didn't go to Savoy. Or I don't too remember. Too, ex too expensive. <laughs> I don't know, but is it more expensive than artisan? Because artisan was quite expensive. Even the, the yeah. company was paying. So you know, <laughs> I, I was I was you know. Let's just say yeah. when you win, so you have a chance to, to see the world and everything. So but we didn't go there. So that's where I've never been, and uh, you know, it's, it has a great legacy, and this is amazing. But it's not only the only thing that happened. Uh, as I know, when you were in Savoy, it also another thing happened at the time where you were in Savoy, in American bar. How how, how did oh, wait? Is that the first time Savoy won uh, first place in in fifty best bars? Yeah. So when I joined the Savoy in two thousand fourteen, I really didn't know nothing. What is fifty best? What is tells the cocktails? You know, <laughs> okay. I didn't know. I didn't know those competitions at the time. So we uh, started but, just started. Yeah, I know 2014 15 we were like number 20 in the world. Then we got 16, we got number eight or five or something like that. Okay. We got no, no, I think 16 we got like second in the world, 15 we got eight. Yeah, and we just getting better and better. Uh, yeah, so in 2017 we 2016 we became a uh, best bar in the Europe and second best okay. bar in the world. And, and then okay. 2017. 2007, yeah, 2017, we won the best bar in the world. Uh, we won Tells the Cocktails, best bar of team. Uh, we won many awards. I mean, the 2017 year going to be always in my mind because not only the Savoy as a team, uh, we won so much. I personally achieved a lot in terms of coffee and good spirit because finally, yeah. after seven, <laughs> seven years of competing, I became world champion. And week before I was competing in a world-class finals of UK, I became top 10 um, uk bartender so like so many things happened in 2017 that i was like whoa this cannot get any better <laughs> that's amazing 2017 yeah i read a bit uh, about about your these accomplishments and yet i know that 2017 is your top year till now <laughs> that's amazing so what happened in 2017 uh martin yeah what do you I, think what do you think you know all this experience what, what could you take uh, take out for yourself and to share with others uh, those headlines those, those points one two three five i don't know how many you have yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean let, let let's i want just a little bit open the eyes of the people right um so people think that to win the best bar in the world you're gonna win it because you know, you know, judges and you're paying judges and because you are establishment, you know, 130 years of history, you know, Savoy is such a legacy. Of course, he has to win and uh, it's all the branding. But soon, soon as we won, many people ask me like, so what does it take to be the best bar in the world? How you can achieve that? You know, like even till now, like I do some consulting job on the side and mm -hmm. some bars, they, they're opening for the reason to be the best bar in the world in those competitions. But what I realized and understood at the Savoy, uh, we became the best bar in the world because we were just simply following one rule and that to make guests happy. And that's the rule number one. You have to make your guests happy and uh, just forget about the competition for a little bit. You know, the most important part is the, the hospitality you're providing to your guests. And I don't want to say that drinks are not important. Yes, they are, but they are just, you know, certain amount of the percentage of the whole experience and our drinks were good you know like i know the bars maybe that drinks a little bit better or different you know like we were doing good cocktails but what we're doing maybe a bit extra was that sequence of services little little details which i call hospitality and i think that's what caused us to win this award and became the best in the world because the team effort we had there from the host to the bar back and all that you know uh, we, we 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 were so focused on hospitality element so my best advice is really, really focus on the customer service, on the guest service and, uh, and hospitality skills. Yes, know how to do drinks, do them well, but I think hospitality element is very important. On the other hand, what I realized and what really changed my life and made me come here to Australia where I'm right now yeah. was was moment when we won everything and I achieved everything what I wanted in my career, you know, being on top of the game. 
I realized one thing. I wanted it so badly. I wanted it so much for so many years, you know, to work coffee competition and world class and all the competition. I wanted it so much that as soon as I won, it was just empty. I didn't, I didn't have any happiness. I, I, I couldn't enjoy it. I, I didn't know how to be happy anymore. You know, like <laughs> uh, it, it was, it was, it was a joy. It was a bit of like, I like feel you're happy. Yeah. For a little bit, but then it disappeared. And I was like, shit, what's, like, next? what's, ne what's next? Like, exactly. you know, like you, you achieve all that, you know, you achieve all that. You're on top of the game. What you gonna do in the next? And I mean, and I think like only stupid person like me would leave such a comfort zone and would leave such an amazing place where you have all those awards and you can like grow on top of them. You know, you can take advantage of them. But I start to realize I want more. I want another challenge. I want to be Martin Hudagas four years ago. Start from zero. Challenge myself and prove myself specifically that I'm the best. Not because of the white jacket and the awards on the wall and the history of the bar, but I'm the best or I can be the best one day because the way who I am and the way I'm treating my guests and the way I'm providing hospitality. And that's the reason why I decided to leave the Savoy. So you left Savoy in 2018 or 2000, 2018. I left the 18. Savoy 2018, but I had these thoughts in end of 2017 because i had opportunity to go to australia for a work trip mm -hmm. with me with mr black coffee liqueur and at that time i didn't work for them i was just like you know they like me my approach for coffee cocktails so they invite me to australia in november 2017 mm. to do some guest ship to do some guest ship in melbourne do some guest ship in sydney and seminars so i travel around and that's kind of opened my eyes because i found in australia what i couldn't get in london and that was this kind of comfort zone of social life you know mm -hmm. i was so happy i was so happy here you know you go to the bars yes barton is working hard you know but they are still happy look the sunshine every day you go to the beach you know everyone is relaxed everyone's mm -hmm. taking it easy you know like there is no pressure and it was so much constant pressure back in london you know like i didn't have a time for myself for day off you know for my family for my partner i was working so hard so i almost burned out so when i came here for this little trip i realized that's what I want. I want to focus more on myself because first of all, I have to be happy if I want to make other if I want to make others happy. And uh, I met beautiful people here. I made some friends and connections. And in 2018, fourth uh, of March, I left Savoy for the first time. I took a little bit of advantage of being finally uh, unemployed, and I traveled a little bit around the world. So between March and June, July, in those three four months, I did like 20 countries. From Japan oh. to to Beirut to Panama to New York and all around and I did lots wow. of like seminars and guest cool. shifts and I did lots of like uh, guest shifts and seminars focusing on hospitality and five star service and as well coffee and cocktails because that was kind of my niche yeah. and then and then 10 of July 2018 which was my birthday easy to remember oh. <laughs> I moved to I moved to Australia and that's exactly two years ago and yeah a couple of weeks since I'm here in Australia all right cool that's a great journey actually that's that's what i want to show with this podcast that the bartender profession and the uh, hospitality industry is so wide and you can you know you can be bartender you can be barista you can mix both you can you can work as a brand ambassador work with drinks you can you know you can make master classes yeah of course you have to grow everywhere and to get uh, some recognition but uh, it's like everywhere if you won't grow professionally nowhere in no industry you won't achieve anything so so your journey is really so much inspiring and uh, i always i see on facebook when i'm <laughs> i'm telling you i'm always like wow this guy is is it's amazing like it's it's crazy how how he he does everything and you know when you. then really great opportunity to talk to you about everything you know and so tell me a little bit how is mr black going now two years in mr black so how how was everything i mean uh i didn't want to really start as an ambassador because i always want to be bartender but uh, i took this opportunity as a part-time I have this global role where I'm traveling from country to country, educating people about coffee and cocktails and modern coffee liquors, such as Mr. Black. You know, right now I'm in a distillery. It's 8.35 yeah. in the morning. 
<laughs> I took the train at I took the train at six o'clock in the morning from Sydney. It's about one hour and a half ride up to Central Coast, and you know it's really local local pro product. We're using uh, our own coffee, which we're sourcing from different origins around the world. We oh, roast really? our own own beans. We create wow. a cold brew infusion blended with Australian wheat spirit and a little bit of sugar. So what is different is we really take coffee seriously, and we use ten times more coffee than anything else, anyone else, and. Have okay. less sugar than any other commercial products. It really tastes like coffee. And you know, like since I'm with the country, we I launch I launch California and about seven different states in the US. I launch five different countries in Asia from Taiwan to Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong. Okay. Uh, we la- we launched in Europe recently. We launch we launch Poland, Germany, France, Italy, uh Czech Republic. We launch Nordic. So it's really big job and big role to do. Yeah, I my my role is more educational and um uh, and i was very uh pleased and uh surprised that tales of the cocktails this year they nominate me for top 10 global ambassadors and on top of that i was very Amazing. happy to see mr black limited edition which we launched recently the colombian single origin was nominated as a top 10 best uh new liquids coming out then I mean, Amazing. step wow. step by step, we're getting there. And, you know, like if I'm not with Mr. Black, then of course I'm with my bar, maybe Sammy. You maybe heard about it in Sydney. So we opened this bar l- last year and it's a great, it's a great ride so far. I think I, I heard a bit from, from, from your Facebook, but I couldn't tell much. Could you tell more about that? Yeah. So maybe Sammy, we opened in January 2019. We, we opened it after almost half year of preparation. It was opened by, uh, I would say, a lot of superstars from abroad. So, okay. uh, one of the members is Andrea Gualdi. He is an ex Artesian member from London. He used to work under Alex Cratian and Simona Caporale. Wow. Uh, cool. As well as well, world class winner 2017 and the number three in the world in Mexico, uh, world class winner. Then Balash Molnar, as well, uh, ex Artesian. We had the, from beginning, we have the, uh, the head server from Connaught in London. We have a guy from Hawksmoor in London, from Playboy's Club of Salvatore Calabresa. So all of us kind of ex-Londoners, five-star hospitality thinkers. We opened this place called Maybe Semi, inspired by Semi Davis Jr., the Red Pack, the old 50s and 60s Las Vegas uh, team. And we really wanted oh. to bring this kind of five-star experience of hotel from London to Australia. And that's why we got this nickname Hotel Bar Without Hotel. And you know, oh, after, yeah, six, yeah. after six I months of being o- six months of being open, Last year in June, we went to New Orleans and we won the best new international cocktail bar in Tales of the Cocktails 2019. <laughs> That's and, amazing. I'm just, you know, mesmerized by hearing all these stories. <laughs> and in November last year, in 50 Best, after nine months of being open, we got listed in 50 Best as a number 43 best Australasian bar in the world. It's also very amazing. And I mean, I mean, I mean we won like, more or less 10 to 12 international national awards for timeouts to you know australian bar awards for best bar team and cocktail bar and everything and i don't want to talk about it as much because i mean those awards are important they open us doors and they brought more guests to our venue which is business at the end of the day but and gives you more motivation a, to move on yeah and, yeah, you know. yeah like i'm being afraid of leaving the savoy you know like leaving the white jacket behind then suddenly Okay, yeah, something you... re- reconnected. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, so like leaving the Savoy and being scared of leaving the past behind, you know, like I think it's worth it because I thought 2017 is the best year, but I would say 2019 was even better because I achieved <laughs> I achieved more with a new bar, completely new bar are being open. And, you know, it's not the bar I just work for, but it's a bar I'm one of the partners, you know, in the company. So it's yeah. like my baby. Definitely. And, uh, it's just amazing. I'm so, so happy. And uh, it's just beginning. We're getting stronger and bigger and we're going to grow and more and more. We just recently appointed uh, uh, one gentleman who used to work for five years at the Dante in New York, which is now best bar in the world. So we have okay. a new, new, new team member and uh, we're growing organically. We're going to open maybe a wow. couple of more venues. Mm-hmm. So good. Wow, that's amazing. That's like crazy, you know, all these stories, it really inspires me so much. So I'm really glad to talk to you because, you know, uh, this inspiration from people who achieved uh, 
a lot of things it's what i really always like and sometimes uh, when you are more so, like don't know your direction or a little bit down so you can always get this inspiration from our people and then lift yourself up and and move on and it's so great to hear all these stories from you martin so where does your inspiration come from for for competitions for example uh... yeah it's it's hard to put it in one box because mm -hmm. sometimes I, I sometimes i have inspiration and i make three drinks in a day and sometimes i can make a drink one drink in a three months it really comes and goes. I think inspiration is uh, it's this kind of, you can't touch it, you know, it's out there and it comes and goes and it's hard mm -hmm. to contain it and turn it into something. But uh, I would say don't focus on our hospitality, don't focus on cocktails and bartenders because if we're gonna follow what others do, our colleagues and peers, we're gonna just repeat the things, get outside, mm -hmm. you know, Look at the kitchen, look at the coffee world, look at the wine world, tea world, you know, look at the architecture, arts, music, you know, everything is out there. Just, you know, when I'm reading books, I'm not reading books about cocktails because like, why would I do it? You know, I want to read books about something I don't know, uh, something what might bring inspiration to the cocktail world. Exactly. <clears throat> so hard to tell, hard to tell what is inspiration, you know, uh, there is no one answer for it. It comes and goes. Just have open eyes and ears and nose and mouth and inhale as much as you can okay thank you thank you for uh, for sharing your knowledge and okay so uh, I, I could already uh, take some something out of your uh, talk about this but i would like to ask you what do you think uh, separates good bartender from a great bartender Ooh. wow so, Good one question. two three points the most important what you what just pops up to your head firstly i think on the first place for me great barton is the person who put the guest up front in the first place okay instead of himself so i think the guest is the most important part of what we do it's the center of the universe as i always say you know okay. the center of the uni center of our universe is the sun and our planets and galaxy we always going around the sun and that's how it should be we should go around the guest you know don't forget okay. that you know uh guests they don't need us we need the guest you know they're gonna bring business to your venue so put your guest up in front of you because if you put yourself and your ego then you're gonna fail uh that's uh first advice second advice <clears throat> uh you know, we've been taught all our life, people were telling us in the school that oh, the guess is always right. But I don't believe so, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, guess is not always right, but it's still your guest. You know, the Walt, Walt Disney yeah. said that. Walt Disney said this beautiful quote that the guests are not always right, but they're always your guests. So, you know, you have to be right because you're professionally studying, you're learning, you know, you're educating yourself. So, of course, you have to have more knowledge than them. But in the end of the day, they are guests. If someone wants a strawberry daiquiri virgin, just give it to them, you know. If someone <laughs> wants, I don't know, some crazy creation, give it to them. You know, even if they are not right, you know, if someone thinks that, you know, daiquiri should be served on a few buys and they want it that way, give it to them, you know, they want it. You know, so make them happy. And uh, even if they are not right, they're always your guests. And uh, yeah, and the third thing, I think we are too much focused on ourselves and techniques and eyes and clarification and homemade ingredients and all that bullshit. No one cares. Like, guess they don't care. They just want to have a good time. So when you are behind the bar and when you're making drinks, like, forget all that bullshit, you know. <laughs> forget all that bullshit and just enjoy enjoy and have a fun and have a joy because that's what guests want to see they don't want to see the barton in this ego bubble with japanese heart shake and oh i'm the best <laughs> no forget about that they want to see your face and your smile they want to see you enjoying yourself to be able to provide that joy and enjoyment for them and only then you can make them happy so forget all the bullshit. When you're behind the bar, just enjoy and go with the flow. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. And Martin, maybe you was thinking or maybe not, you know, maybe you were there too busy, but uh, I still believe uh, that it influenced uh, the body you talked about. Uh, uh, 
how do you think this uh, virus covid situation will shape the bartending industry in the future uh, will change it or what, what, what do you think will change the most what new things we might see in the bar industry if you already thought of it so much you know or and you or you have some yeah, ideas yeah. Or some ideas but you know might come true might not but you know it's interesting to share and you would like to share of course you have to think about it because as a one of the bar owners you think about your business what's next and uh i think what we're gonna see is that the guests the people who coming to your venues uh we appreciate them more because we've been without them for so many months we've been closed we're gonna appreciate our guests more and we're gonna understand that they are so so important and we won't take them for granted anymore mm -hmm. Uh, from, from the guest perspective, you know, they're going to appreciate cocktails as well. I mean, in the last couple of months, the home cocktail service was thriving. You know, people were ordering bottled cocktails for home. And I think that those people, like, they're missing cocktails, you know. The average consumers, they're missing cocktails. They want to make them at home. They want to learn how to make them. They want to drink them. But what they're missing yeah. most is the interaction with the bartender. They wanna, they're missing this kind of all, all hospitality entertainment. So they'll, when they'll come to your bar, we have to focus on that aspect of connection with the guests. We have to connect with them as before, even more. And I think third thing I would say, people having less money, you know, it's, it's, it's the global economy going down. So if people choosing to go to your venue, uh, you have to be careful with the offering and pricing. And you have to understand that those people willing to spend their own savings and money to for your beverages, for your drinks. And... I think the cocktails became a luxury. Mm -hmm. no. Martin? Uh, I... Do you hear me? Uh, your, your, your visual just stopped. Uh... Connect to us. Uh... Your 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 visual just stopped. Uh, connect to us. Uh, Martin, are you there? Oh, okay. Oh, I hear you, but just only one or half word at a time. Okay, waiting for Martin to reconnect. Oh, 
I see you now. Just I don't know if I can hear you. Oh. For those who will be viewing this uh, video podcast, so just please skip a little bit to then you will see Martin again. <laughs> so that means our conversation is going again. And now I'm waiting for Martin to reconnect. Okay. Sorry, I feel guys. It's... Yeah, okay. sorry. Okay, it's okay, I think. It's okay. I, I already told people that uh, they can skip a bit, you know, to when we will see you again. So that means the conversation is happening again. So no problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 ha it's hard to be in Australia and especially it's hard to be in the uh, middle of the forest, you know, because like if you look around, there's just forest behind me. And, yeah, uh, it's nice. And our, like it. and, our, <laughs> and our distillery. So it's very, very... Uh, remote but what i wanted to say just back to the point what we're gonna see from the people we're gonna see more appreciation on both sides so bartenders and hospitality business owners gonna appreciate guests more and the guests gonna appreciate bars even more so it's positive little positive things in this negative time okay okay cool and uh, so martin a couple more questions tell me so what, what is your favorite cocktail uh, at the moment or and Every spirit Every cocktail in my glass, you know, as, oh. soon as, you pay, as soon as you pay for it. I'm not a picky person. <laughs> of, of course, I love coffee cocktails. You know, that's my niche. You know, I, I love to make them. I love to drink them. So, you know, I like everything pretty much. I'm not picky. But if I can choose only one, that would be Martinez. Martinez with a, Martinez. With a nice vermouth, nice uh, autumn gin, you know, a okay. bit, and, bit of cherry, and, orange peel. And the coffee besides <laughs> on the side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, one more question. So uh, what is your goal now? Because uh, I remember you were saying like um, when you got all those, you know, awards, everything, it was like empty, you know, and when you made yourself uh, new goals and now you are like climbing those ladders. So what is your new like goals? And actually... Uh, what is your, how do you see yourself in 10 years, let's say? Do you have this vision of, I don't know, be, but I mean, being, becoming, what would you like to be, uh, what's your next goal and what's, wh what do you, what, who do you want to be in 10 years? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. I have only one answer on this. Uh, my goal or where I want to be in 10 years or whatever, there's only one thing, I want to be happy. Simple as that. Okay. but in, pro in professional uh, more in professional so. doesn't matter even even if i'm not gonna work behind the bar anymore even if i'm not okay. gonna work for a brand i just want to be happy you know maybe i'm gonna be gardener maybe i'm gonna have a little coffee shop or roastery or maybe i'm gonna i don't know i don't know i just want to be happy really oh. i i stop i stopped giving my goals to myself i i stopped um, putting you know those kind of limits to myself and it's not healthy anymore i just want to oh. be happy simple as that happy uh, right. <laughs> because when you're happy then others are happy everyone is happy and uh yeah happiness that's it okay okay martin and uh, i liked a bit actually i remembered one more very important question uh what would be let's say three five things what you could tell is the most important like uh, that helped you to achieve everything that you achieved in life I mean, in uh, more professional sphere, uh, talking uh, about their achievements, you know, but uh, so w what are the, like, you know, those important things when uh, people, uh, people uh, like, let's say, uh, when people ask sometimes a uh, businessman, you know, so what are the three things that helped you build this huge company or something? So that's what I'm really interested, you know, what do you think, uh, what you took out for yourself, you know? So what are like three, five things? It depends how many you could, could just tell. But yeah, yeah. the most important that helped you to reach uh, your goals. Um, that's a good, good, good question. Um, 
I mean, first of all, you need to have a healthy mind. You need to be a healthy person, right? Oh, I don't hear you again, Martin. Not healthy. Martin, can Martin, you hear me Martin? now? Uh, yeah, now I can hear. Yes. Okay, so could you start yeah, again? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's hard here now. It's getting harder. Uh, yeah, at first, so yeah, it's very good. For first of all, have a healthy mind. Be healthy. You need to. Your well-being needs to be good. You know, if you're not taking care of your your body, you cannot take care of others. Oh, yeah. So we we have to first of all take care of others because we're forgetting about this and we putting so much effort into taking care of our guests and we're forgetting about us. And then of course in our industry we see so many problems with depression and uh, suicide and other problems. So Please, please, please always take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, then you cannot take care of others. Secondly, love yourself. You know, you have to love yourself as a person. You know, you have to wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, I see this, I love myself. You are the best man. And if okay. you love yourself, then you can love the others. You know, without love to yourself and respect for yourself, you can give respect and love to your family, to your colleagues, to your um, employees and guests. So love yourself. Uh, third thing, remember that you have to be Martin better uh, than yesterday. Uh, yeah, I don't. I I yeah. couldn't hear very well, but you said you like uh, yeah to remember to be better every day than it was yesterday. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. We have to be the best version of ourselves. We have to grow. You know, we you can't stop. Uh, and like just. I mean, it's it's hard it's hard to tell, but just yeah, guys, forget about like know the classic drinks, you know, know how to know techniques, etc. Have a basic knowledge, but invest time in yourself, you know, on your well being, and that's what I realized even now during pandemic and being in Australia for two years. If I'm not healthy, if I'm not strong enough, then how can I, you know, be there strong behind the bar every night? You know, like you running, I see you like running a lot, you exercise a lot. You know, myself, for example, I'm vegan for the last two years, so I don't eat dairy and meat. So, <laughs> you know, <Me> like... <laughs> those... Uh, you you disappear. Like, yeah. What you drink, with who you... Yeah. So, Martin, I didn't hear you like one minute uh, or like 30 seconds, maybe. Yeah, so what I want to say is choose wisely, you know, uh, what you eat, what you drink, what you're doing in your own time, and take care of yourself, guys. That's very important because if you're not functioning, then you can function behind the bar and make others happy. And I think the connection is connection is getting better now, so worse now. Sorry. So I think it's time it's time to close this before I disappear. <laughs> they limit they limit the connection in Australia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, enough for you today. All right, so. Anyways, it was a very nice uh, talk and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed to hear your story from your own lips, you know. And uh, I personally took a lot of for myself, a lot of inspiration, a lot of uh, insights, a lot of uh, ideas. And I hope people who will be watching this podcast will get, uh, will get uh, the same. I, I don't have a doubt about that because... Martin, you really are an inspiration and thank you for being my guest on, on this podcast. Um, I'm really happy uh, to talk to you. And I hope is Florida already open for Mr. Black? Because I checked in total wines, I didn't see. They don't I'll let it. you I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Should be there anytime soon. Ah, oh, okay. So it's it's not yet. Yeah, so yo, let me know. And uh, if you come or when you come to Miami, so definitely let me know. So <laughs> we will meet, Perfect. we will make some coffee cocktails. <laughs> uh, we will taste uh, Mr. Black uh, because I, I haven't had a taste, but I heard of this uh, before from people, just I haven't tasted it yet. I don't know if, if, if there is somewhere here or Anyways, so thank you very much. Uh, I will share your contacts uh, with people who wants to follow your journey, who wants to see uh, what you do. I will write in the in the description. So, guys, please go follow Martin. He's thank really you. an 
collaboration and uh, whoever wants to be a bartender a great bartender so this is the person you should look at uh, and you want to, to get inspiration and to go further in your career and in your life so thank you very much martin one more time thank you guys have a great day uh, have you. a great day at the distillery in australia <laughs> big smile you too uh, I was pleasure to see you after all those years, like uh, have a normal conversation, at least on the internet. And I hope I see you in Miami soon. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.